Hi everyone, welcome back. We're on rose number six, okay? And oh, I, I made a uh, frame for this other one here. Doesn't that look kind of nice? That looks all framed up for the one we just did and uh, for you, the one we did yesterday. And um, I think that uh, that's gonna look pretty nice in there. You might consider putting a little band of color here, but you don't wanna make the frame when you have a small painting like this, you don't wanna make the frame too busy. They'll, you know, it'll get uh, competition with it, with the rose. All right. Same thing that I have, same last palette, Hansa Yellow, Yellow Oxide, Burnt Sienna, Naphthal Red Light, Pine Green, Thalo Blue, Nap I mean the Red Violet, Black and White, little cap of extender out here. It is slightly yellow tinged because I got it dirty from a brush, but that's all right. Light Gray, of video number one, tells exactly what I'm doing with these panels. I haven't changed sizes. We'll do some other sizes later on, but um, let's uh, take and uh, I haven't done kind of a bluish background yet, so let's take some of our thalo blue and white, and it is uh, very powerful, so let's tone it down. You go to any complement to tone it down. Here's a little burnt sienna in it, and I like the burnt sienna in it. We'll go just slightly darker here. I'm going to kind of push this over. I'm thinking like a color like this that might be a little bit blue-green, so you can Take it over to the, the violet side. Just touch your dark violet. Find a color that you kind of like. That's kind of pretty. Let's add a little extender to that. And let's just push that. Maybe even streak some violets too into that as well here. We'll, we'll push some of this color on like this. And I like to do these kinds of things quick. I, I, you know, it's what I love about the small paintings is you can try color combinations really fast. Let's take some of that, push that in. Now let's just go up and down a bit here. We'll leave some of that gray showing through every once in a while here like this. A little streaky, little streaks of uh, interest in there. And uh, Pull that across like that. That's nice. You could use water to soften it out. I'm going to leave it right about like that. And uh, I think that's kind of a pretty, kind of an interesting color for the background of roses. Now I want to do kind of a peach color. Peach is um, really any kind of soft orange, really. And so some yellow and red. I love the, the yellow oxide. Red. We'll put some white into that. And you see you get a nice peach color. If you want it brighter, Okay, a brighter color to that. You can add some of your Hansa yellow and you can see you get a brighter uh, peach kind of color here too. That's kind of pretty. Let's push one, see we did the last one. Which way did we do that? This way. So let's go back up over this way a bit. Now this blue's a little wet so this will also tone. But you know the peach is really kind of a soft orange and um, so it's uh, the the, the blue and the peach are really kind of complements here on the painting. So let's put that on. Let's do a larger, slightly larger peach rose. We'll put a warm and cool side on it. And we'll put a couple of blossoms maybe with that. So we'll start out there. Okay, let's go more yellow type of blossoms here. So let's put in some uh, yellow that we might want to have kind of moving through or the idea, just little ideas of it here, of where some blossoms might be. Let's take our burnt sienna and our green, my one of my favorites here. Oh, that's got a little bit of that blue in there. Let's come back down here. And uh, let's drop in, uh, this time we'll drop in. Sometimes I like to do this right away. Well, actually many times I like to do the stems right away because it gives me a line of movement into the painting. And I always paint better when I can find my line of movement. Let's put a little dark greens, burnt sienna's in here. And we'll do it, uh, get a little movement coming out of there like that. That's kind of nice. All right, so now I'm gonna switch over to my reds real quick. I'm gonna give that brush a quick rinse in some water. Let's go to our cools. We'll take some red, that's our warm, and we'll take the red violet, our cool, Work those together here. We'll come down about a third, like we have been doing. Put in that nice dark there, then lift. We have to get it lighter. Lift to get it up here to the light. Now, if it doesn't lighten up enough, pinch wipe the color off your brush. You can even pick up a little extender here. Pinch wipe that off. Go back into some of your peach and push that back through 
like that to, so you get that color softer. But the most important thing is this nice movement to your rows. That's the most important. Let's drop some of that color right down at the bottom. I'm going to leave it a little bit uh, powerful. Paint it a little more powerful contrast here. Put a little more darker red violet into that. Let's take a little bit of burnt sienna and some of that red violet. Touch that into some of where the blossoms might be to the centers of those. Put those colors in and around. And drop that in there like that. And I'll rinse some of that out a bit. And uh, let's come in and, and uh, with more of our peach kind of color here. A little different, maybe a little bit more of a yellow to it uh, this time. Warmer color here. We'll build this side of the rose, build it up with some of that color. Letting this side down here, let's take a little bit of that peach in this cooler color right down here to this side. So we'll definitely see the warm and cool side of the uh, the rose there like that. Let's build up some more light into this. Build up a lighter color. Let's come out, before we build that up there this time, let's come right out here and uh, the side, kind of that outside petal. That's kind of pretty. Push the roundness of the bowl and then in and out of that petal just a bit to get that movement in there correct. Everything is about the movement. Let's put a lighter petal in here. Stop short of the bowl. Remember, we're stopping short of the bowl. Push that round right into that bowl there. Let's continue around some petals back here. I haven't really painted the turned roses with you yet. We're just practicing these. Of course, we're only on number six, so got a long ways to go. Um, when we turn roses, we'll paint open roses. We'll paint all different kinds here. We're just getting some of these concepts down really well before we go hit those others. Let's turn some of that around inside here. Movement. Leave the movement here. All right, let's lighten up. Nice, pretty light color here. Not pure white. Nice light. It's up about a value, almost nine right there. So, real light. Let's set that in there. Now, sometimes you'll hit some of that red from the center, and boy, just use it, pull it down, create, use that to create some interest in the composition. I'll probably cover up here because I got more stuff to do, but because uh, I'm lightening up the fronts of these roses here, pull down, just kind of always find that into the position of the bowl. Let's strike got a little bit more. Yeah, it just kind of disappeared, but it's pretty when that happens. And that could be something that you can look at incorporating into your roses, you know, as part of a technique or something. Let's uh, curve this around, close up this rose a bit more. A little bit different. You can take a petal edging technique, drop into that corner, a little bit of that light corner in there, and drop in any more petals that you want to have. Sometimes I'll do that and pull down like that to create some interest and then reset the front of this one here and so you get a a different look to the center of the rose. There's a lot of different things. I do a lot of different things. Let's get a little more yellow, a little more light here. Let's drop in some nice light here. Push that down into the the roundness here of the of the bowl. I like that roundness of the bowl. Let's strike a light petal right here. You know, and I, I put larger petals stay outside, smaller as they come in. Wipe my finger here a bit and pull right into that, pull right into that, uh, that, the bowl, the shape of the bowl. That's what makes that petal, incorporates that petal into the rose. Let's put just a bit of that edge of that petal there. So those come together nice. You can look at bringing stuff together. Sometimes you can look at even putting like a little chisel mark like that so it looks like another petal. All kinds of different ways. Touch a little extender here. I'm just going to keep this wet, but I want to—I don't want it to thin the color. I want to keep this color nice and thick as I'm painting this. I like to use a lot of paint. So I push that on there. Now what's the thing is, we find the bowl. First stroke finds the bowl. 
find the bowl, push in and out just a bit. There we go. Now that two colors joined up too much to make that one big looking petal there. So we'll put a little more light stroke right there like that to make that look a those petals look a little different. And sometimes when it's a small, like I said on the last rose, when it's a little hard to get in there, especially with me with my big fat fingers, it's a little hard sometimes to get in there. So I'll just make a bowl, any kind of bowl color, push that in. I can soften it right out like that. Then it gives me more room to push to soften that just a touch. That's a bit better. But I can take some of that color up just like that into the bowl. And look at that beautiful movement that that rose has there. That's what I look for. Let's get back down here, slightly darker and a little cooler here. So I'm not quite that light and put some of these petals here out onto this side. Nice orange peachy rose here. Push a bit here, push in and out there and uh, a bit more out here there like that okay and let's pick up some more light build up the front of that rose a bit more light nice light color push that in. Now you can slide it over to some of that nice peach. Push that right down into that bowl there. So this heavy shadow doesn't need to go all the way up. It kind of can diminish there. And um, we'll build this up a bit more. A bit more light. A little more light petal there. And see, I pulled down this way, I soften the light. I pulled down, I pull up like this, I, I bring up the shadow. So you can, I call it kind of push and pulling the rose there. And um, that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna pay, take almost a white petal, just a little bit of the, of the, the uh, peach color in it. And let's just set a petal right in there like that to the front. Now, you know, you can put shadow on the bottom, you can put shadow on the top. I kind of like that. I'm going to take a little softer shadow color here and just find that bowl. Remember, always find that bowl. So as I bring these two petals together, I always want to stop short of the bowl. So I'll bring some of this light together here like this, like those are coming together to find the bowl. Now, this stroke is a little curved like that, doesn't match these, so I'm going to take a little light and just pull out just a touch. See how that changes the whole feeling of that petal. Let's take a little bowl shadow kind of color and find the bottom of that bowl. And a little bit of light pulling down here to just bring those together, see? Now, this is a little confused right there, so I'll take some of my shadow that's real close. Let's get some burnt sienna, some red violet, a little yellow. That's a pretty shadow. It doesn't have to be the same as what you did before. Matter of fact, it's prettiest if it's not. And remember, we find the bowl. Find the bowl, push that around in there, just soften it in, find the bowl. That sets the bowl right in there, like that again. And uh, we'll set a couple petals, not quite as, not light, a little bit cool here. Let's set a couple petals right out here like that maybe just a little cooler light right down in the front there like that that's kind of nice now one of the things that i like to do especially when i paint a rose that's like this and i'm painting it onto a blue background is take some of that blue background see it's still nice and wet here because i added extender to it uh, take that blue background doesn't have to be the same just some kind of version of that and i like to add let's go slightly lighter I like it lighter, sometimes brighter here too. Let's try this. Yeah, a little bit of that into the, the sides of the rose and incorporates that color into the rose just a bit. Makes it kind of pretty, kind of sparkly, you know. So I'll add some of that around, that color 
as we go to paint those little blossoms there too. Now the rose is kind of narrow um, here. I can, and I'll show you here, we'll do it this way. We'll take kind of cool color. Let's just push this up like that. Let that kind of disappear out here. I want a little more length on this side of the rose here. I'm not going to make petals though. I'm going to do it negatively, negatively. Um, let's look at this. I could have a touch more warmth, so I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to take a touch more warmth and light right here on that side of the rose there. Here, like that. Pull that down and around. Like that. That's kind of pretty. Here. Put a little more light here. Drop it around. That just gives a little more width to the rose as you drag some of that light across there like that. See, it makes that nice width by still not losing too much. Now, I don't have a real powerful petal out front. Now, sometimes I don't, but I think I'm going to bring this one up just a bit more before I let it kind of soften out, push into the bowl. There, like that. Yeah, that'll work a little better. Before I let that uh, soften out there, that's a little better. That's kind of pretty. I could have one more light, since I, you know, one more little bit of the light here, up into very, very front, a nice strike of that light. Depends on how much contrast you want to have, you know, on your rose. And that's a lot of contrast there. Let's just take a soft peach here. Again, I don't wor worry about making the same color. I want it slightly different. Here, just touch that through. Make sure you find that bowl. Right like that. That's pretty. So that's got that, that rose has a lot of movement in it. Okay, let's take a nice light yellow. Use these colors. Just add some yellow into them, some nice uh, yellow oxide. Not a super bright yellow, it's a toned yellow. We'll put some light with it. We'll put a, make some light blossoms here. The blossoms are really just kind of, um, I almost look at them as like uh, uh, leaf strokes, you know, like just two or three strokes making each blossom here. And we'll do a couple of smaller ones here that'll turn the blossom here. Just like that, let that fade away on this side. We give just an idea of the blossom petals out there onto the side so the blossom turns slightly. I want these light petals though, pointing right at the, at the queen of our painting here, the rose. I want her to have the interest there. So we'll let that one go there. Let light ones pointing to her right up here. So let's do that sideways here a little bit and let these fade away just ideas push in and out a bit that's kind of pretty and uh, this one does the same thing and I, I like them better when I paint them faster let's drop in some here just some ideas of the colors and stuff there that's kind of nice maybe a little longer on the side here longer petals on the side help it turn a little bit more see how that turns just a little bit more there like that now let's put some other just little touches of this through here so we don't look like bum 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 some some touches of this color through here maybe a little more yellow a little bit cooler down like this down in through here so you got the idea that there's other stuff going on maybe some coming out here like this so you see that creates a an area of these little of these little flowers more than anything else we create some movement and area of them some ideas of them here and uh, just I'm not really painting blossoms as much as I'm just giving the impressions of them. That works pretty well that way. Okay, now this stops right here in a line. So I would probably take some of that blossom color a little further down here like this. Maybe a couple of lighter little edges and stuff like that. So that pulls your eye down just a bit. Drop a little burnt sienna. 
Burcian and some of that violet we used earlier would be nice. I do like the violet colors into the center of yellow blossoms. Nice compliment thing. There, just a little bit more heavy on these three main ones that I first painted here. And then we'll take, this is one of my favorite things to do, a little yellow oxide, a little bit of Hansa. Tap that into the corner, tap one side, then lightly, lightly, light pressure, just a little bit to the shadow side there. So yellow oxide in the brush, pick up a corner of Hansa, start up by the light side, tap it, and then just let it fade away. Now sometimes I'll push the brush over to the yellow oxide side and soften it out. Pick up some more Hansa, tap the heavy light side, tap just a little bit onto the shadow side. I'm always painting light and shadow. Always looking at light and shadow. Where the light is, where the shadow is. Nice blurry little colors there. That works. Let's get into our greens. Let's make, a, let's first make our nice cooler green here. Pine green and some red violet. Now we'll use that to drop our contrast in there. Don't cover up everything we did there before, but see that nice contrast in there. Let's head it a little bit more green. Maybe a touch of extender in there. I like that slipperiness there. And this is what we'll use that negative painting for to see I'll use that to shape the petal shapes out here on that side of the rose. So that gives it this translucent kind of feeling here. Like this. Here. I'll drop some of that out. Let's... Uh, restate some of our our uh, stem lines and stem ideas and stuff in there just put a bit more of that around here just ideas of it that's nice some more of that color to shape the rose here now you can uh, lighten this up let's get up over here to Add some of that green and stuff right to our lighter colors. Use that also to shape and fill in a bit some ideas of leaves. Sometimes I like to have, well, many times I like to have a cup. Even if I paint more casual leaves, I like to have some leaves that are a little bit more precision into their, their shape so that um, the viewer can definitely see them as leaves there like that. So... That's kind of nice. And we'll come down here. See, you can use that even to shape a couple of these blossoms. Pull some uh, leaf shapes. Pull down some color. If you put just a touch of that extender in there, it pulls down really nice because it slides. Now you don't want to take off too much, though. Here, we'll just put a little bit of that in there. Now, that gives me some nice room. Let's put a little more green out here. That gives me some uh, nice room uh, here for a, maybe a lighter leaf. Remember when we say we like to have different, like to have the different values of the colors into some leaves. So maybe pull out here with a lighter leaf. We'll set one right in there here. I dislike, you know, I, I used to just do it all dark, but, you know, now I really do put the light. Now I'm just going to set that light leaf right there, right up over the top. In fact, let's put a little bit of light right here, too. Right over the top of that blossom, kind of sink it down just a bit. We'll lighten this up, give myself some more light here. But the leaf can be a little darker than that blossom. It doesn't hurt it. Cause that blossom is so light you know so you can put the darker leaf on top of the blossom but it, the leaf is showing the light you know that's where you know we want it to do is show where the light is notice how i just push i don't i paint out there real casual i don't try to be perfect i'm going to take a little corner of the light here let's just draw that little vein line out on some of these 
cap it down a little darker as you go to some of these back ones. You don't have to have it perfect out there like that. That one's just a little too perfect here. That's kind of pretty. Yeah, that worked out uh, kind of nice there on that whole rose. I, you know, you can come back after you do that and say, okay, let's take, and, and you don't have to be perfect with any of this. Let's take more of our, our peachy color here. A little bit, even a little green and in my brush. It doesn't hurt this. And uh, let's push a little more red. Push in just a touch more light onto that petal there. Come back and set it in one more time. And right like that. Don't need to do too much more than that. Makes kind of a pretty little rose. Still under 25 minutes, so we're in, we're in really good shape. Let's take a look and let's drop this uh, frame out of this one. See how that'll look in the frame. Now you do all different kinds of frame colors and stuff. Maybe a dark blue frame would look nice on that one. But uh, yeah, that looks uh, kind of nice in that little frame. Maybe a darker kind of blue though would look really nice. And you can play with that too, or a nice blue green. Hey, there you go. There's a peach rose, a little different. You know, put those colors on and work those those backgrounds all within our under our 30 minutes. Nice fast things. Get that fast. Get that speed. And like I say, you don't have to paint as fast as I do, but the goal of this whole thing is for you to start doing this in under 30 minutes. And if it takes you 20 roses to get there, you can just get it underneath that time. Keep that because it's the movement. You don't want to play. That gets rid of the movement. That destroys the movement of the rose. And so. To paint them it really takes a lot of confidence, and confidence is going to come from doing a lot of them, okay? That's what it is, is do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again, and always concentrate on that center, the bull shadow, find the bull. Paint it fast, never lose the bull, and you have a pretty rose, okay? All right, I'll see you on rose number seven. Okay, see you later.